Welcome back to this week's Bible Reader's Companion. We'll be continuing in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and 7. We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We give no offense in anything, that our ministry may not be blamed, but in all things we commend ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience, in tribulations, in needs, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in laborers, in sleeplessness, in fastings, by purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastised, chastened and not yet killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. O Corinthians, O we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is open wide. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. Now in return for the same, I speak as to you as children. You also be open. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from them among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughter, says the Lord Almighty. Chapter 7 Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from our filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Open your hearts to us. We have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We have cheated no one. I do not say this to commend, for I have said before that you are in our hearts to die together and to live together. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is the boasting on your behalf. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. For indeed, when we came to Macedonia, our bodies had no rest. We were troubled on every side. Outside were conflicts. Inside were fears. Nevertheless, God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not only by this coming, but also by the consolation with which he was comforted in you. When he told us of your earnest desire, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I rejoiced even more. For even if I made you sorry with my letter, I did not regret it, though I did regret it. For I perceive that the same epistle made you sorry, though only for a while. Now I rejoice that you were made sorry. But that your sorrow led to repentance, for you were made sorry in a godly manner, that you might suffer loss for us in nothing. For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation. Not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the word produces death. For observe the very thing that, you're, that you sorrowed in a godly manner. What diligence it produced in you, what clearing of yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what vehement desire, what zeal, what vindication in all things, you proved yourself to be clear in this matter. Therefore, although I write, wrote to you, I did not do it for the sake of him who had done the wrong, nor for the sake of him who suffered the wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear to you. Therefore, we have confirmed in your comfort, and we rejoice exceedingly more for the joy of Titus because his spirit has been refreshed by you all. For if in, in anything I have boasted to him about you, 
I am not ashamed. But as, I, as we spoke all things to you in truth, even so our boasting of Titus was found true, and his affections are greater for you as he remembers the obedience of you all. With how with fear and trembling you received him. Therefore, I rejoice that I have confidence in you in everything. Come back again later this week as Ben continues to dive deeper into the word. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook for more content like this.